Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Monday morning to you, and welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I'm the president of Preterist Research Institute. I do appreciate you being with me so very, very much. We are continuing our summation of what we covered more in depth in our study of the Olivet Discourse. We are focused at the present moment on Matthew chapter 24 and verse 36, in which Jesus said, but of that day and hour, pardon me, knows no man, no, not the angels, no, not the son, but the father only. That's a, actually a conflation of uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So anyway, we are told, as I have shared with you, by the, by the great majority of commentaries, that in this verse, Jesus is changing the subject from the impending fall of Jerusalem that occurred in AD 70 and the end of the world. Now, here, here's what is absolutely critical to understand, ladies and gentlemen. We have to keep in mind that the entire argument, the totality of the argument, that Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, Jesus was changing the subject from the end of the Old Covenant age to the end of the Christian age is because of the presupposition, okay, the preconceived idea that in Matthew chapter 24, verse 3, the apostles had asked about Christ coming, parousia, and the end of time or the end of the Christian age. Because Matthew chapter 24, verse 3 is in response to Jesus' prediction. Of, now listen to me. Jesus had not said one single word. Do you catch this? In his temple discourse, Matthew chapter 23, he said not one single word about his coming at the end of the Christian age. Uh, the fact is, he never talked about the end of the Christian age at all, because that's not a biblical doctrine. But my point is, in every single thing leading up to the Olivet Discourse, Jesus did not mention, even remotely, his literal physical coming at the end of time. So we're supposed to believe here. Now, so of course, some pe <clears throat> people believe, well, you know, press, in Matthew chapter 22, he talked about the resurrection. Funny that the apostles didn't ask him when that would be, right? But nonetheless, <clears throat> someone might suggest, well, if you go back to chapter 22, talked about the resurrection, that's at the end of the age and at his coming. Well, there's no doubt that his coming, the end of the age, and the resurrection are all interrelated. There's Nobody denies that. The question is, how does that relate to the apostles' questions in Matthew 24 based upon the assumption that the apostles are asking about the end of time? Is my question clear here? In other words, let me put it a little bit differently. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 22 is a remote context. All right? There is no immediate context whereby we have the authority to interject the, the, a question from the apostles about the end of time. It has to be proven, first of all, that even in the remote context, i.e. Matthew 22, it's talking about the end of the Christian age, the end of time. Well, I don't... I'm not going to take the time this morning to demonstrate that that's not what he's talking about. I'm simply trying to emphasize the point that the entire structure of the arguments concerning 
Matthew 24, 36, but of that day and hour, knows no man. The entire argument is based upon the presupposition that the apostles asked about two things. They asked about the fall of Jerusalem, destruction of the temple, and then ignorantly linking the coming of the Lord, the resurrection, the end of the age, with that destruction, they then asked, and what should be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And so what I'm suggesting here, before anyone could even begin to make an argument on Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, being the great continental divide of the Olivet Discourse, they first of all have to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that Matthew chapter 24, verse 3, was a question posed by the apostles concerning two events. Follow Jerusalem, end of time, literal, physical, bodily, visible, coming of the Lord. See, you have to prove that in order to make the point of Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. And let me add to that. Mark chapter 13, which is probably written prior to Matthew, prior to Luke, according to most scholarship. I don't have any reason to doubt that. What I do doubt, by the way, is that Matthew, Mark, and Luke were written after A.D. 70. I find that completely untenable. One of the reasons why scholars take that late date is because they don't believe in actual spirit-inspired prophecy. Well, you know, if Matthew, Mark, and Luke were written before the fall of Jerusalem in A.D. 70, then since A.D. 70 happened just like Matthew, Mark, and Luke described, that would demand that Jesus was giving inspired prophecy. Well, that can't be. Therefore, Matthew, Mark, and Luke were written after A.D. 70. There's a, uh, I believe it's a 2022 book written on redating the New Testament. This is not John A.T. Robinson's book. If anyone wants the name of the book, I'll be glad to give it to you. It's a modern, more modern scholar reassessing the dating of, of the New Testament, all of the New Testament. In addition to that, John Wenham wrote a book redating Matthew, Mark, and Luke, in which he rejected his prior conviction that they were written after A.D. 70 and shows that they were all written beforehand. Okay. So, back to the text itself. That was a little bit of a diversion. So we have Matthew recording the apostles asking, tell us when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? But in Mark chapter 13, remember, parallel prophecy, parallel passage, parallel account. What do we find? We find Jesus predicting exactly like he did in chapter 24, Matthew 24. The time is coming in which not one stone shall be left standing on top of another. And the apostles ask, watch this now, catch the power of this. Tell us, when shall these things be? Okay, great. Exactly the same question as Matthew 24 and verse 3. But then notice what happens. And what shall be the sign? Okay, exactly like Matthew chapter 24, verse 3, right? Yeah. Oh, but wait. What shall be the sign when all of these things are fulfilled? What? Do you realize that when commentators go to Matthew chapter 24 and verse 3, and they say the apostles are asking about at least two, perhaps three, events. 
destruction of Jerusalem, coming of the Lord, and the end of the age. Well, you know, coming of the Lord and the end of the age are synchronous events. So it could only be, if there is a change of subject, it could only be two subjects that the apostles are asking about. But remember, they're asking, what should be the sign of your coming in the end of the age? They ask that in direct response to his prediction of the destruction of Jerusalem, right? Well, most, most scholars, most commentators say, yeah, they ask that question in response to the prediction of the fall of Jerusalem. But of course, they were confused. They were wrong. They wrongly conflated the destruction of Jerusalem with the end of the age and his coming. Well, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I recently wrote a book, 2023, entitled, "All Things." These are the days in which all things must be fulfilled. Do you realize that throughout the entirety of the Tanakh, in the prophetic corpus, do you realize that invariably the coming of the Lord, the judgment, the resurrection, every major prophecy of those events is posited in the context of the destruction of Old Covenant, Israel, Jerusalem, and the temple. Every one of them. I document this in this book. Go to my website, donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com. Look, folks, this is stunning. And what this means is, when we come to Matthew chapter 24 and verse 3, and it is suggested, it is insisted, as a matter of fact, that the apostles were ignorant. They were confused because they were linking, conflating, the fall of Jerusalem with the end of the age, coming of the Lord. Well, guess what? Isaiah 65, 66 conflated the judgment on Israel with the new creation, meaning he conflated it with resurrection and coming of the Lord. Daniel chapter 12, resurrection, posited at the time when the power of the holy people is completely shattered. Zechariah chapter 14, the new Jerusalem, the river of life, posited at the time in which Jerusalem would be destroyed. On and on it goes, ladies and gentlemen. So the question therefore becomes, if the apostles were aware of all of these Old Testament prophecies, that joined the end of the age events with the judgment on Jerusalem, then upon what basis do we say, well, you know, when Jesus predicted the fall of Jerusalem in the temple in Matthew 24, the apostles were just so confused. They were wrong because they joined those events. I would suggest to you very kindly that it's not the apostles that were confused. It's not the apostles that were ignorant. It's the commentators who say the apostles were ignorant and confused because those commentators are completely overlooking or denying the fact that the Old Testament invariably posits the coming of the Lord, judgment, resurrection, kingdom, salvation, etc., at the time of the judgment of Old Covenant Israel, Jerusalem, and the temple. So when Mark records in Mark chapter 13, in direct response to Jesus' prediction of the destruction of, of Jerusalem and the temple, and the apostles ask, tell us when shall these things be? Everybody's on the same page, AD 70. And what shall be the sign when all of these things will, must be fulfilled or will be fulfilled? By the way, Luke chapter 21 same identical questions. Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign when all of these things will come to pass? In other words, Mark and Luke make no mention whatsoever of any distinction between the coming of the Lord the end of the age, and the destruction of Jerusalem. According to Mark and Luke, there is one singular subject 
being discussed. That was the fall of Jerusalem and the temple in AD 70. Well, thank you for joining me. Tomorrow, we're going to be looking a little bit at the linguistics of Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. But of that day and hour, oh, there it is. We are, we are just told this is the language of contrast. This has to be starting a brand new subject. Not true at all. So I'll see you on the flip side.